Hey there, YouTube, Brenda Petrella here, and happy spring, everybody. We just passed the March equinox, and do you know what that means? That means it is time to start planning your Milky Way photos. Now, if you've never shot the Milky Way and you've always wanted to learn how to do Milky Way photography or night sky photography, or if it's just been sort of a confusing process or your photos don't turn out so great, then you're in luck. I'm going to do a three-part series over the next few months on how to plan a Milky Way photo, how to prepare yourself and your gear and what tips and accessories you're going to need to do night sky photography. And third, we're going to actually go out and do night sky photography together and shoot the Milky Way. And I know what you guys are thinking. There are so many tutorials out there about how to photograph the Milky Way or how to edit photos of the Milky Way. And that's true. And you should definitely check them out. But there aren't that many videos that go over how to plan a Milky Way photo or how to prepare yourself or your gear and what accessories you should use when you go out to do night sky photography. So today is part one. We're going to go over an app that I like to use called Photo Pills. And I'm, as a disclaimer here, um, I am not paid or endorsed or anything by Photo Pills. I just think it's a great app. It is $9.99 on the iTunes App Store and for Android as well, but it's worth the money. I find that Photo Pills is a very confusing but super robust app. And I think it's a must have app for photographers who want to plan out their photo shoots. My goal today is to simplify just the basics of what you're going to need to know with photo pills in order to plan your next Milky Way photo. Before we can start planning the Milky Way, we need to know where to find the Milky Way. The Milky Way is this thick band of stars that stretches across the sky from the northern sky to the southern sky. And it is only visible in the northern hemisphere between March and November. And that's because of how the Earth is rotating and what time of year it is that some constellations and the Milky Way, for instance, are only visible in the day hours. And of course, we can't see it during those times. So it's not until March that the Milky Way starts to come up above the horizon so that we can start to see it. And in March, it's pretty close to the horizon. And in November, it's pretty close to the horizon. So the northern part of the Milky Way is is not quite as interesting looking as the southern part of the Milky Way. The southern part of the Milky Way is what's called the galactic center, and that is the most photographed part of the Milky Way. It's what most people strive to get, and when people are referring to Milky Way photos, they are often talking about this galactic center. And early in the season, this galactic center is actually more in the southeastern sky. And by the end of the season, this galactic center is gonna be facing more towards the southwestern sky. And so that will help you visualize when you're at a given location, which way is the Milky Way going to be facing and what time of year should you be planning on getting the composition that you wanna get. Now, the second part to planning your Milky Way photo is knowing that you're going to be able to see the Milky Way once you trek out in the middle of the night and start looking for it. So there are four things that can influence how well you're going to be able to see the Milky Way and photograph it at night. The first way is weather. So of course, if you have a cloudy night, there's no way you're gonna see the Milky Way. The second thing is the phase of the moon. Now the moon, because it's so bright, can really influence how well you're going to be able to expose your image of the Milky Way. The moon's gonna wash out that photo. You wanna try to find nights that are when there's no moon or when the moon is setting early. So the nights when there's no moon, that's called the new moon, and that happens once a month. And we'll go over how to find that out in the PhotoPills app. The third thing is light pollution. So a lot of people live in populated areas and they can't even see the Milky Way with the naked eye. And that's because light pollution, like the moon, can have some really negative effects on the ability for you and your camera sensor to pick up the Milky Way. And so what you wanna do is look for dark sky areas. And there are a lot of maps online that can do this. I'm gonna link one below called Dark Sight Finder. It's basically like a heat map of the world of where all of the high light pollution areas are and where there is no light pollution or very little light pollution. So you wanna prioritize 
the dark areas for the best shots. And then lastly, something that I think gets overlooked a lot is humidity. So I live in the Northeast and it can get pretty humid in the summer and that can have a hazy sort of effect on the cleanness of the Milky Way photo. Okay, so we're gonna take off soon, but before we do, let's jump into the app and I'm going to show you a couple of menus that are really important to keep in mind and how to navigate through to start planning out your photo. And then what we're going to do is we're gonna hop in the truck and we're gonna go on a little hike up to a spot where I think might make a good Milky Way photo. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is open up the PhotoPills app. Once inside the app, you'll see that you have access to a whole variety of tools that you can use in your photography. The two tools that we're going to focus on today are the Moon tool and the Planner tool. So let's just jump in the Moon tool real quick. It gives you tons of information, anything really you'd ever want to know about the moon and when it's rising, setting, waxing, waning, so forth. The thing that I want to show you is down on the very lower bottom of the screen is a menu bar. If you click on calendar, this gives you a very brief overview of the entire month and the phases of the moon. So you can quickly look through your calendar to see when you're going to have a new moon in order to plan out your Milky Way photography. Okay, so now let's go back to the Planner app. So when you open up the Planner app, this might seem overwhelming. I know it did to me the first few times I tried to use it. So let's break it down just a little bit. So at the top, you have a scrolling menu that you can scroll left and go through all of these different options. So that's just the top bar there. In the middle, you have a map, as you can see here, and we'll talk about what the different symbols mean. Just on the bottom part of the map, there's this plus sign, and that opens up another menu bar of different tools that you can use on the map. Just below the map is a timeline graph that basically goes through the day and night hours. Just below the date graph, the date and time graph, are the days, uh, time, and the date. And if you click right in the middle on that clock, we'll bring you up to how you can set that. And if you have a different day than the day you want, you, I, what I like to do is just hit now and that sort of resets and then you can go from there. And then below that is another menu with different tools such as find augmented reality, night augmented reality, and so forth. Because we're talking about Milky Way planning, we are going to use these two tools at the top of your screen. The first one is indicated by these white dots with a big white dot in the middle, and that indicates the galactic center of the Milky Way. And it tells you the time it will start to rise to when it will set, and then the degrees of elevation above the horizon where, where it should be at this given time and day. If you scroll left, you'll come to another Milky Way menu, and it's indicated as an actual photo of the Milky Way, and that is a responsive picture. So as you scroll through time, you can see how the Milky Way is spinning around in that little circle. And that's basically giving you a quick visual of what orientation the Milky Way will have in the sky at a given time. It also tells you the maximum elevation to expect of the Milky Way in the sky. Okay, so now let's actually look at the map. First of all, I have the map set up on terrain. If you wanted to change how the map looks, you just click on that black plus sign that brings up this menu. And if you scroll over to the thing that looks like a folded map and click on it, you can try satellite view or standard view, depending on what you like. Okay, so the location that I have in mind is in Royalton, Vermont, known as Kent's Ledge. And if you just hold down on your finger on that little orange dot and you let go of it, it drops that pin. Then scroll that top menu over a little bit until you get to this little double mountain looking symbol. If you click on that, this little black pin shows up. And this is called the geodetic pin. And again, if you hold your finger on it and scroll it around, you can drop that anywhere. I like to use that as a point of reference of, you know, where am I going to be pointing my camera in relation to the terrain? As I'm scrolling through time, do you see that white line, that white, white line that's spinning around the map? And connected to that white line are these white dots. So that white line basically indicates where the Milky Way is crossing the horizon. Those white dots actually indicate the Milky Way. And as you can see, as I go forward in time, those white dots get bigger and bigger as they cross a certain threshold after that light gray line. 
And what that is indicating is when the galactic center will become visible in the sky. That dark gray line is when the galactic center will go below the horizon. The other thing to keep in mind is the concentric circles around your location. That's basically indicating the degrees at which the Milky Way will be in the sky. So if we scroll that top menu back over to our Milky Way photo here, you can see that it's pretty low in the sky as indicated both by the white dots being on the very outer part of that concentric circle. And if we look at the top menu there, the maximum elevation of the Milky Way is at 16.7 degrees. And then as we scroll through time, it actually goes up higher in the sky. So just before daybreak, do you see how that white dotted line is now compressed more towards the middle of those concentric circles? And we can see that our maximum elevation at this point in time is at 53.7 degrees. Say we wanna skip ahead to the next new moon. Well, we don't actually have to go back to the new moon planner. We can just stay in this current screen and all we have to do is click that galaxy button at the top, click on it. It automatically advances us one month forward to the next new moon. And so we can do that for the whole season and watch how the Milky Way changes at a given time on a given day. And that is very helpful for being able to plan your Milky Way photos as we will see once we get out in the field. So here we are, we're finally on trail, and it is another just gorgeous day in Vermont today. It's definitely starting to feel like spring. This trail is nice and packed. It's a really very popular hiking trail. I think it's about two miles, and it's pretty just straight up. There's some switchbacks. It's a great day to go scope out this potential location for the Milky Way, so I'm really excited to see what we find out at the top. So here's a little Vermont riddle. What do you get in Vermont when the daytime temperatures are above freezing and the nighttime temperatures are below freezing? Any guesses? Maple syrup. Another fun fact about syrup, in case you didn't know, is that it takes 40 gallons of sap to make one gallon of syrup. So that's a lot of boiling. So it's a, it's a labor of love making maple syrup. picking up so I think we're almost to the top you know my luck with being on the edge of things it doesn't always go so well even though it's it's not icy or anything I'm still gonna stick these buggers on all right here we are oh this is gorgeous just beautiful Vermont wilderness everywhere when I was here this summer, I realized that the sun was behind me. That's west, that's east, that's south. And as I said earlier today, you know, the Milky Way is in the southern sky and it goes from the beginning of the season from southeastern sky to the southwestern sky. So I'm really curious to see what the PhotoPills app is gonna show me. So the first thing I'm doing is I'm pressing the planner button. And I'm going to hit that plus sign in the lower right corner and drop the pin to make sure that my little orange pin is exactly where I'm located. The next thing I'm doing is making sure that as I'm looking at the river here in the valley that I have my little black pin, my geodetic marker, in the spot that I think it's supposed to be. Given the, the curve of the river, I think it is. 
I might move it just a little a little closer. So if we go and we click on the little clock, we can click now, and that brings us to the time of day right now. And then we can fast forward by scrolling that bottom um, graph into night. And you can see as I'm doing that that the that the arc of the Milky Way, those dotted line, that dotted line that's connected to the white flat line, is rotating around the horizon. It looks like at about 2.45 a.m. I'm just starting to be able to see the galactic center and again that's indicated here by those larger white circles starting to move into the area. Okay so if I want to see what that's going to look like all I have to do is click this night AR button. It's now overlaying the Milky Way in my view so I can just move my phone around to sort of see where in the sky the Milky Way is going to be in relation to this view. And this little orange dot is what's indicating the middle of the galactic core. This white line across the bottom here is indicating the horizon. And then you can also see the direction. So here's east and here's southeast. So let's just see what it would look like in September as an example. So again, if I just come back to the map screen and click on the galactic center, that's May, June, July, August. Let's try August. Okay, so the little picture is showing me that the Galactic Center and the Milky Way will be kind of vertical in the sky. So let's see if that's true. So here we have now the Galactic Center is off of the horizon and the Milky Way is, is going in a much more vertical fashion up into the sky. If I just want to save this, all I have to do is hit save and I can save it as a plan or point of interest. When it's time, you can just come in and load in that uh, program and you'll have all the details for the plan of that shot. And that's it. Okay, everyone, I hope that was helpful in terms of understanding how you can use photo pills to plan out your Milky Way photography. If you have any questions, please drop them in the comments below. I read all of them. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. If you haven't hit that subscribe button yet, please consider doing so. And uh, go ahead and follow me over on Instagram. And we'll see you uh, in the next video. Thanks.